Good evening and welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Report. Tonight we talk big news within the, within the men's basketball program, lacrosse updates, drama in the NBA playoffs, and more. So get ready Marquette Nation because Golden Eagle Sports Report starts right now. from the Jeannie Hayes Virtual Studio at Marquette University. This is Golden Eagles Sports Report. Marquette gets the rebound, and the champions have gone down! Hello everyone, I'm Molly Gretzlock. And I'm Kristen Parisi. This just in, head coach Shaka Smart secures his first class of 2023 commit with four-star recruit Zaid Lowry, officially announcing joining the program. The six foot four shooting guard is ranked 93rd in his class, according to rivals. Lowry averaged nearly 16 points, seven rebounds per game at Kickapoo High School this past season. Now, addition to him, the men's basketball team adds some newcomers to the squad for next season as well. Forward Zach Reitzel announces that he will be joining Marquette's program after four seasons with Loyola University, New Orleans. Reitzel is coming off a career year with the Wolfpack, averaging 19 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 assists in 38 games. Reitzel went on to win the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics Player of the Year and the NAIA National Championship with Loyola. Reitzel leaves the Wolfpack's program as the all-time leader in points, rebounds, and assists. Along with Reitzel, head coach Shaka Smart welcomes an international standout, Ben Gold, to the program. Gold, a former member of the NBA Global Academy, becomes the first New Zealand native to, to join an NCAA Division I team. Prior to signing with the Golden Eagles, Gold traveled with NBA Academy Latin America in 2021 to take part in the G League Showcase. His best outing came against NBA Academy Africa, putting up 22 points and 8 rebounds. Gold joins fellow teammate Olivier Maxis Prosper as the only NBA Academy Latin America players on Marquette's team. Now, despite the recent additions, two members of the team have announced their intentions to move on from the program. Sophomore forward Justin Lewis announces that he will declare for the 2022 NBA draft while maintaining his college eligibility. Lewis is coming off his best season, leading Marquette with approximately 17 points and eight rebounds in 32 games. He also went on to win the 2021-22 Big East Most Improved Player Award. In his two seasons with the Golden Eagles, Lewis scored a total of 700 points while adding just over 360 total rebounds. ESPN currently has Lewis projected to go in the second round of the NBA draft at pick 37. Lewis will have until June 1st to decide if he will stay in the draft or return to college. In addition to Lewis, Redshirt Jr. Greg Elliott announces he will enter the transfer portal. Elliott put up a career best seven points per game in 28 games this season. Elliott scored a career high 25 points against DePaul on January 11th and tallied double figures six times this season. In five seasons with Marquette, Al Elliott tallied just over 600 points, almost half of them coming from beyond the arc. And with that, we would now like to welcome in men's basketball beat reporter Matt Yazel for more on the news within the men's program. Matt, great to have you back. Great to be back, Molly. Let's get right into it. First, what are your initial thoughts with Marquette's additions of Wrightsell and Gold? Are they going to be an impact to this program? Oh, I think they'll be a huge impact. I, I think the big thing for me with these two additions is that both of these players have experience playing at a level above high school. Obviously, with Gold, you know, he's just going to come in as his first year player, but he has experience playing overseas in the NBA Academy against guys who are a lot older than him. Um, so I think that experience is going to be really valuable for him. And then with Wrightsell, you know, a guy who's already put up over 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds in his collegiate career. Crazy. We saw this year with Kirk Queth and Daryl Morsell, two graduate students transferring into the program, how much that experience really matters coming into 
a program like Marquette playing in an NBA arena and all that. So they'll have an easier time adjusting, mm -hmm. I think. And, you know, two forwards, Reitzel 6'7", Gold at 6'11", guys who can really do it all on the floor. I think those are the type of players that thrive here at Marquette and thrive under Coach Shaka Smart. They obviously have a lot of good stuff on their resumes already, but like you mentioned a little bit, Marquette is losing some players in Kirkwest and potentially Justin Lewis. How do you see them stepping up to fill these big roles? Yeah, I think obviously with the size of gold at 6'11", he can certainly try to help out down low with the absence of Kirk Queth, who did an incredible job this year with blocked shots and scoring down low. But, you know, they'll still have Osui Gadaro down there. I think he'll try to take a step up next year to allow gold some time to develop. But I expect Wright Soul even more so to have a very prominent role. You know, he only has one year left of eligibility in college. So I think you expect him, a guy who, again, has a ton of experience playing in college already, to really come in right away. Maybe he'll start, maybe he won't. There's still a lot to be shaken out with next year's roster. But I expect Reitzel to really play a prominent role next year. All right, you heard it here first then. <laughs> and obviously, Queth and Lewis, as we saw in those highlights, really played well off of each other and complimented each other. So hopefully these two can do that as well. And now, obviously, we mentioned earlier in the show that Justin Lewis is declaring for the NBA draft. Now, tell me, what are your predictions? Is he staying at Marquette? Is he leaving? Yeah, I, I think the two things that stand out to me is that he signed an agent, mm -hmm. which is typically, you know, a lot of times we've seen lately guys that maybe will get drafted, maybe won't. They don't sign an agent, but they declare for the draft. So Lewis has signed an agent already. And as you mentioned earlier, he is projected to be drafted. So I think, you know, if I was projected to go in the NBA draft, I think I'd probably go oh. ahead and enter the draft for and sure. take my chances. And, you know, while Marquette fans may think there's some benefits for him staying, and I, I would agree, I think there's some things that he could work on in his game here at the college level. But the reality is, he's an NBA caliber player. Mm -hmm. You know, he has the strength, the size of an yeah. NBA player, and he really improved this season and showed what he can do. So I think, from his perspective, he has the chance to get drafted in the NBA, achieve a lifelong dream, and make some money. So I think yeah. he can yep. probably... I would assume he's going to go into the NBA. I agree with that one. And along with him, Greg Elliott entered the transfer portal. Tell me, how have you seen him grow throughout these years here? You, you're, you've been with him since the very beginning, right? Yes, he's been here the last four years, even though it doesn't necessarily feel that way, <laughs> only being a redshirt junior last year. But uh, he's really grown a lot. He's went through a lot at, at Marquette. He had multiple long-term injury struggles. You know, this year he had the suspension at the start of the mm -hmm. year, which kind of um, haltered his um, progress at the start of the year. But I, I think this was a really quality last season for Elliott, really kind of filling in an important role for him off the bench as a primary shooter for this team. And I, I just think over his four years, he did really grow a lot into mm -hmm. the player he became. I think it was probably time for his time at Marquette yeah. to be over. I mean, there's a lot going on with this program, with the transition with Shaka Smart as mm -hmm. well. So I'm not surprised to see him enter the portal. But I, I think Greg Elliott's presence is what will be missed yeah. the most of Marquette. Obviously a guy, you know, all of his teammates love him. You mm -hmm. know, him and Jamal Kane were best friends for a few years and we saw their, you know, their connection on and off the court. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, Justin Lewis talked a lot about Greg Elliott this year um, when I was writing a story about him and he talked about the relationship those two have. So I think his presence more than anything will be missed. But yeah. on the court, he did grow a lot. He went through a lot and, you know, he, he left he left a mark here at Marquette, and I think that's all you can ask for from a college player. Yes, for sure. I think the one word that you could describe him best with is growth throughout these seasons. And yeah, you can see him on the bench. He is a fun player, and I'm sure the players that he played with this year will miss him next year, but looking forward to see where he goes. And once again, thanks for the insights, Matt. And coming up, can the women's lacrosse team keep up, keep its winning streak alive? Plus, what is women's basketball head coach Megan Duffy up to now? Find out next. Bring it. Time out, guys. I'm late to dinner. My mom's gonna kill me. Catch you guys later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. 
You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right, have us some one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry, I'll, I'll see you later. Precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to load their minds. Dare to explore. Dare to stem. Learn more at She Can Stem. Welcome back to Golden Eagles Sports Report. Once again, I'm Molly Gretzlock. And I'm Kristen Parisi. The women's basketball team adds a new face to its roster. Guard Kenzie Hare announces her commitment to Marquette after decommitting from St. Louis University. She averaged 20 points per game in her senior season at Naperville North High School. Following her successful campaign, Hare won the 2021-2022 Naperville Sun Girls Basketball Player of the Year. Hare becomes the fourth member of the 2026 class to commit to Marquette. The women's lacrosse team looks to extend its winning streak to three games. Tyler Peters has more from Valley Fields. A cold, snowy April day outside of Valley Fields. But on the inside, the Marquette women's lacrosse team looks to bring the heat against the number 18 Notre Dame Fighting Irish. <laughs> Plenty of fans from both sides make an appearance, including some famous ones. Marquette starts out quickly, scoring the first goal of the match to set the tone on offense, but Notre Dame immediately answers back, scoring the equalizer and string together six unanswered goals. The Golden Eagles continue to struggle defensively and go into halftime down 15-3. The final two frames fare better for Marquette, outscoring Notre Dame 7-4, but it's too little too late as the Golden Eagles run out of luck against the Fighting Irish, falling 19-10. I think we started to show that effort in the second half a lot better. Like, we're fighting for some of those scrappy 50-50 balls that in the first half we were sort of just assuming they were going to get and, and sort of playing reactive rather than being aggressive and going after them. Senior midfielder Lydia Faust is among three Golden Eagles to score a pair of goals in the match. We did well with the opportunities we did have. We really struggled to get the ball in the first half, so that didn't give us a lot of opportunities to score goals, but when we did have the ball, I thought we were successful. Marquette takes on the Georgetown Hoyas in its final home match Sunday afternoon. Reporting from Valley Fields, I'm Tyler Peters, Marquette Wire Sports. We now want to welcome in women's lacrosse beat reporter Jackson Gross. Jackson, it's great to have you back on the show. Good to be talking some women's lacrosse with you, Kristen. Yep, and starting things off, Marquette struggled against Notre Dame. I mean, coming into it, a top 25 team mm -hmm. was going to be a tough feat once and for all. But what were some positives you took away from the match? Well, really most of the positives came in that second half. The, the defense finally found its form in that second half, only allowed four goals, no free position shots for Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish in that second half. It's just, and they also did a really good job on the draw control, seven to five in draw controls in that second half. It's just been a constant back and forth with this team all years, putting forth a 60 minute effort. Obviously in that first half was not as good and they got down late, but they were able to at least try and make it a game against a really good opponent. I mean, losing by nine to a top 25 team, that's 
It's not great, but you'll take the positives where you can get them, especially in that second half. Exactly, and although the first half didn't go the way, second half definitely started mm -hmm. to go some things. And Shea Garcia, Kira Lamont, and Lydia Faust put up two goals each in the match, and the three of them combined have 117 goals of the 220 goals, 222 goals for the <laughs> Golden Eagles this season, which is more than half. So right. a little bit of a hot take, but are they the best scoring trio in the Big East? Man, that's that's that is a lot of goals, but. I'll, I'll flip it a little bit. I'll put a spin on it. I think they're the most impactful trio because with injuries to Leah Steiner or Lee Steiner and Hannah Grieving, they've really had to shoulder a load offensively, especially Kira Lamont, her first year after an incredible year with uh, Furham University. But I got to say the best, at least in the Big East, is, is UConn. They got four players in the top 10. I mean, Sydney Watson, Kate Schaefer, Leah LaPreece, and, and Grace Kuhn, all 30 plus goals, I believe. They're just an incredible team. The reason yeah. they're they're a top twenty-five teams. So, but while they're while UConn is the best, I believe for the situation Marquette is in, they're they have the most impactful trio. Yeah, and those three are going to be very impactful mm. going forward into the season and tournament play. But looking ahead, they have only two games left in the regular season. What adjustments do the Golden Eagles need to make going forward? Well, it's really what uh, head coach Meredith Black has been preaching all season long, and that's putting forth a 60-minute effort. They've had struggled throughout the entire season. They've had some really good games where they've been able to just dominate the entire game, but that's something they're still working on. And the other main thing is this hustle. That has been their mentality since 2021, essentially, after last year ended the way it did with playing each conference opponent twice. But that's when their main focus is hustle, getting better physically, and just playing your last moment and playing every moment like it's your last. So they're just going to have to continue to do that, but put forth that 60 minute effort. As you said in the postseason, a full 60 mm -hmm. minute effort is going to be huge because you don't want to play behind when there's a chance that you can go home. But if they put together a full 60 minute game, do you think there's any chance that this team can win the Big East Championship? Oh man, you're forcing me to do two hot <laughs> takes in this segment. Hey, it's what we're here for. <laughs> um, they're already a lock for the tournament because they will take care of business mm. against Butler and Villanova. And even if Marquette loses out, they're they're still at least the four seed. Right now they're tied for second, which personally I did not see coming mm. into the season. But it just depends on the matchup. Because I think in their matchup against UConn, they, they had a bad first half. We were able to make it a game and only lost by three. So I think if they match up with them in the first round, get a three seed and UConn's that two seed, I think they really got a shot to at least make the final. But... If they gotta play like Denver in the mm, first yeah. round, that's that's a much taller task. And although they they lost both games against Denver, that second one was a double overtime game. So they can compete with them. It's just gonna come down to like we've been talking about, 60 minute effort and getting consistent production from the goalkeepers. Yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see if the consistency can pay off. But yeah. that's all the time we have, Jackson. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, it's been great. Coming up, the season of fearing the deer is here, or is it? We'll discuss after the break. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Roll over. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. 
They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. And we're back in Studio 7 as we will discuss the NBA playoffs, MLB early season surprises, and more. Joining me on the panel tonight is Matt Yazel, Kristen Parisi, and Jackson Gross. Let's get started. For the first time in NBA playoff history, four players aged 22 or younger have scored 30 plus points. Do you think the league is turning over to the next generation? Matt, let's start with you. Well, it's been really fun to see in these early playoff rounds, all these young guys you know, getting to shine on the brightest stage for sure. But I don't know if I'm going to be that bold and say that the league is turning over to these guys just yet. And I think it's just because you know, this is the first round of the NBA playoffs. The NBA is a league. I mean, eight teams make the playoffs on both sides. I, I think you got to get further into the playoffs and start talking about these guys really taking over the league. It, it, that's what we're trying to discuss here in terms of winning a title. You know, John Morant's been incredible. He was an MVP candidate at one point. But has, has, have we seen him play beyond the first round of the NBA playoffs? No. I mean, it, we're not – if we're talking about these guys taking over, you know, the LeBrons, the KD, the Steph Curry, guys in their 30s, you know, all those guys have played in the NBA Finals and have won, have rings on their finger. Even Giannis at 27, who's a lot older than these guys under 22. But I, I think they, we got to give it more time and give these guys, you know, they got to show it on the brightest stage before we start talking about these guys taking over the league. Yeah, well... With how many young stars they've been shown out, it's really, it's really blinding my eyes. The stars are flying so brightly right now. Oh gosh. And all the performances this past weekend, including the play-in, Anthony Edwards against the Clippers was fantastic, yeah. and even in game one against Memphis. But part of the also reason I'm wearing sunglasses is because my favorite performance of the weekend was a pool party. Jordan Poole. Okay. Oh, the, uh, oh, the sunglasses <laughs> and the pun. Mike. Let's go <laughs> after that one. But no, but Jordan, no, Jordan Poole was fantastic in game one against the Nuggets. 30 points, especially with Steph Curry coming off that injury. I have been a Jordan Poole fan since game one of this of this season. Like when they played the Lakers, game one, I, every time he, I wanted him just to shoot the ball. So it's been fantastic to see Jordan Poole start to light it up in the playoffs and another really solid game in game two but it's gonna be interesting I'm, I'm sad he wasn't a, a most improved player finalist but I'm, I'm excited to see where the Warriors and he, he go yeah I'm gonna counter off Matt I do think the new player the young players are starting to turn over the league because when you think about it yes LeBron James has been running the NBA for 20 plus years but oh, wow. now all you see is on Sports Center, on Bleacher Report on all them LaMelo La La Ball the whatever yeah. it is the NBA loves the Ball family. Haven't really seen a lot of Lonzo. Can't stay healthy. Oh, come on. <laughs> He's been stay... injured. Yeah, exactly. Cannot stay healthy. Oh, yeah. my God. But you've seen they're coming up. You need John Morant, Anthony Edwards. They're all just running the game in the in the regular season. And we've yeah, seen right. them. But we've seen in them. In two we, weeks, okay. you're not going to see any of those highlights. You, how are you supposed to know? Playing. Jordan gone, Poole gone. is now in the starting lineup and now for Steph yeah. Curry, and he's done very well. I mean, obviously, it's just the start, but I think it's the start of something new. That's all. I mean, I'll get my Fair quick enough. pick in here. I agree with Matt. I mean, obviously, the players have to start somewhere, and they're going to be stars right away. But even I'll take Giannis, for example. He was obviously good right away, but – He's great Not now. Not nearly as good. Just because you don't win now. a title, you see all of them. Like, I'm LaMelo Ball is, yeah. like, the MVP on the Charlotte Hornets. Right. Right. That's Carry all I got to say. <laughs> Carrying on. That's all I'm Carrying on now. The <laughs> NBA playoff discussion um, continues. The Warriors are hot. Is their recent success just a fluke, or can they legitimately win it all? Jackson? Oh, How man. I know I just talked about how much I love the Warriors and Jordan Poole, but... Bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Like, I'm not saying, like, I'm actually rooting for Ooh. them. I just like a lot of their players. Like, I like Steph. I like Clay, I like Jordan Poole. Heck, I, I like, even like Draymond. But overall, it's hard to say at this point. They hate, No offense to the Nuggets, who have probably probably the next league MVP again in Nikola Jokic. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Potentially. I'm not saying well, that's yeah, my yeah. pick, but oh, potentially. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, but 
they're playing the Nuggets without Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. So they're and they've been dominating them. Throw Marcus Howard in the mix. This <laughs> 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 good. He's been good. He hasn't even been more play time. Get him in. Get him in. I'll come back to me when they play either Memphis in the second round or or eventually potentially Phoenix in the Western Conference Finals. Then we can talk about them potentially winning a title. How can you say that the Golden State Warriors are a dark horse or a fluke? Have have we not seen anything since 2015? It's a new Warriors team, though. It's, a, it's still Curry. How is it a new Warriors team if Steph, Dre, and Clay are still on the team? How is it Curry's new? hurt. KD's not there. Curry, KD wasn't there Clay when, Thompson when they dominated in 2015, 2016. Okay, He's getting there. Steph Curry might be hurt, but he put up, what, 34 points in the last game? So like you can I'm tell not me, saying Steph Curry's not still good. Yeah. I'm just but saying. But you can't tell me that they are a fluke if they've been dominating the league and they went to what four or five straight NBA finals. To like, be fair, three like of them were with a, a top ten team of all time. Two or three of them were with a top ten team of all yeah. time. I know, but they still have one, the probably the best shooter in the NBA yeah. in NBA history. Like you can't Jordan tell Bull. me that you can't be telling me that <laughs> you, you, you just can't tell me that that is a, that they're a fluke. Like if you think that they're a fluke, you obviously. Are like I don't well, know. Well, they don't. I mean, if they don't win, they're a fluke. Yeah. How are they gonna? If they don't win, then they're a fluke. How is that? What if how they lose they next round to the Minnesota Timberwolves or, or the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies? Okay, you can say that after, but you can't tell me right now that they're a fluke. You can't sure. tell me right now that they're. Yeah. A fluke. I mean, I don't think they're a fluke, but I don't think they're going to win at all, like we stated at the beginning. Yeah. Do you but get, if who, they, yeah, who, who you got coming out of the West? Are they, they going to win? I think the Western Conference Final could be Phoenix and Golden State if it's mm-hmm. how it's working. Yeah. But that's, that's, I don't. Think you don't yeah. think they that do the Warriors are going to give Steph Curry a run for their money? I mean, Warriors are going to give. Devin Booker and the Suns are around for their there, money. There you go. You don't they think certainly that's gonna, can. You can't can. tell me that you don't yeah. think that's going to happen. They certainly can. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, Phoenix, I think Phoenix, Phoenix is, I think, is good, I think, I think but I don't know if it. they're all that. Phoenix is good, but I don't know if Phoenix they're all that. You have Jay wins. Crowder having, what, one point, one assist, one rebound, one block, whatever it was, in 34 whatever oh. minutes, but... <laughs> Oh I don't know. But they have I, seven I know. other very high you, quality players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that matchup was there with Phoenix, it'll be a good they, matchup. Yeah, like they, they might win matchup. it. They'll take a few games, yeah. but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, no. All it is, they're is, not all advancing. All it is is just butt hurt people. They're like, me, 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 It's LeBron fans that they're like, yeah, yeah, that's It's just like the Suns are that good. They're a 60 win team, and they actually have a center. Yeah. Okay, they might be that good, but when you play the Warriors in the playoffs, <laughs> you can't tell me that they're a fan favorite. Also, let's say the Warriors make it to the finals against whatever team in the East. Who's guarding Giannis? Who's guarding Joel Embiid? Who's yeah. guarding KD? I mean, that, that's the question for me with the Warriors. All right, before we mm-hmm. end it, though, Kristen, how far do you have the Warriors going? Are you taking them all the way? Or? <laughs> no, it sounds like I, it. I, the way you're defending them, them the way right way you... now is because I'm not like a huge Warriors fan, but if people that are like, it's just a fluke. Like, <laughs> like it's not like it's not like they're like a one hit wonder team. Like it's like the Timberwolves or something that like no one ever saw them Ooh. coming. So sorry <laughs> to everyone, but it's not like they're this is the first time that they've been in the playoffs. So all right, okay. Okay. I, I will say that. If they do play a team from the East, I could see the Bucks giving them a run for their money, but I do think that they can overcome Phoenix because, like they did in the finals, I think Phoenix will collapse at some point. Well, the Warriors are thanking you for your support tonight, <laughs> but that'll be it Welcome. for this discussion. We are out of time, but be sure to tune in next Tuesday for all our Marquette coverage of sports and more. I'm Molly Gretzlack. Good night, Marquette.